Live from Dublin, Ireland, it's The Cube. Covering Hadoop Summit Europe 2016. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Dublin, Ireland. This is a European version of The Cube. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Rumurthy, the C co-founder of Hortonworks. You were the CTO at one point, but now I have a new CTO, but you're the co-founder. Arun, great to see you. Thank you, pleasure. It's, been a, it's been a while, but it's fun to be back. Yeah. Great to see you, you look great uh, on stage too. It was a great keynote. Really talking about the journey of Hadoop, and it was nice to see the slides, a little throwback, 2006. Absolutely, it's been a while, isn't it? Through there, yeah. Tell us about, you, what's, what's, the, what's the world like for you these days, looking back like that? Uh, it's kind of amazing. Um, you know, you know, one of the things I like about Europe is coming here, it gives you a sense of perspective, time, perspective on time. We were talking about 10 years of Hadoop. Yesterday I was at the Trinity College, and that one's been, the first provost they had was in 1592. So it gives you <laughs> a sense of time. How small we are. Exactly. <laughs> Older than my house. That was before the first pub, actually. We exactly. Just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's been an amazing journey. I, I couldn't have imagined uh, how far we'd come, but being, um, being here, uh, we obviously want to go further. I, hopefully, you guys and us will be talking in 10 years from now, I'm talking about the 20 yeah. years of Hadoop, not 10. Yeah, 10 years, congratulations, it's been a great run. It's been fun to watch you guys from the beginning, um, kind of spin out of Yahoo, whatever they mm -hmm. call it, spin out or take out, or whatever they call it. But you guys have done a lot of work, and what's interesting now is, under the new marketing and kind of the positioning, highlights kind of where you guys are going, this whole connected Connect. data platform. Absolutely, I think, you know, as we've always been focused as a, as a, as a set of, as technologists and as a company, we've been focused on making sure we help our customers solve their business problems. Now, it's been pretty, it's becoming clearer and clearer by the day, especially over the last, I would say, 12 months. This notion of IoT is becoming, you know, important and real. Uh, it's, it's been, we've been talking about IoT for a long time, um, you know, toasters and fridges for 10 years, yeah. 20 years now. But it's become real. I think there's a, a set of things which have happened. One is, uh, it's getting cheaper and cheaper to, uh, move data around uh, from the point of origin to its eventual destination place. You know, things like 3G and 4G definitely helps. Um, obviously, we play a part as a Hadoop community by making it really economically feasible to store and process data at scale, to curate data at scale. And last but not least, I think what we'll also see going forward is hardware itself. It'll get cheaper and cheaper to produce custom hardware, so you're going to stick hardware on everything, whether it's a Raspberry Pi, $3 Raspberry Pi, or whatever. You're going to so if you take these trends of cheap hardware or custom hardware, custom ASICs, um, you know, cheap uh, communication channels and cheap storage and processing channels, um, it, it, it's the right, it's sort of the right point in time, if you will, in, in, from, a, from a technology curve to be able to solve this. And what we've also seen is, over the last couple of years, I'm sure, you know, you know there's the Gartners and everybody's talked about it, which is more data is getting generated outside the data center than within the data center at every enterprise today. Whether it's social, mobile, you know, sensors, beacons, yeah. and so on. We, as a company, it was very important for us to ensure we have a complete end-to-end -end story from the point of origin, which is where the NIFI, the Onyara acquisition came, and folks like Joe Witt, uh, phenomenally, phenomenally smart guys, we love, we love having them over at Hortonworks. It allows us to, you know, capture data from its point of origin into sort of classic analytics with Hadoop and equally importantly push the data back yeah. into the edge for you know, better intelligence. And it's using the data for insights and actionable results. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things Wikibon's talking about, mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned Gardner, but one of the things Wikibon's talking about that I think is important is taking the systems of intelligence concept to a whole other level and they got Absolutely. a lot of traction with that because the practitioners out there are looking at data and Raghu from Microsoft talked about it, data's everything. You know, I, I wrote a blog post in 2007 saying data is the new development kit. Kind of mm -hmm. people are like, what do you mean? It's now pretty clear that data is now part of the development process with DevOps and cloud. Absolutely, data is an ingredient for that. Absolutely, and you know, you know, I think you put it well. So the way we see this is that every app, every mar every application that you're going to write in an enterprise um, is a data app. I mean, if you if you're not able to manage data, if you're not able to use data to derive actionable inclusions out of, the, out of that, you're doing something less than ideal, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we feel like, uh, again, if you go back in time, data is what is, is probably the most tangible asset you have in the enterprise. I mean, yeah. stop, you know, 
if you had a piece of software running in 1960, it's worthless right now, but if you had, let's say, an IBM stock code from 1960, it's definitely useful in yeah. some context or other. That's why data is the most tangible asset you and have in the place. context is changing so rapidly, exactly. the data's got to be fluid. Absolutely, and you've got to have lots of it, not just down sample data. Um, having the data in its raw form is really important, and yeah. we're starting to see that more and more of the industry, you know, sort of appreciated and actually take it. So advantage. since we're going down memory lane, I want to go back to this. the original founding days of Hortonworks. Hortonworks, you guys used to have, your, your, the original founders would have a statement that 50% of the world's data would be stored in Hadoop by whenever, 2015. Yeah. Now whether or not that happened is kind of irrelevant. The point was, that was a sort of a unifying vision. Yeah, And absolutely. you're talking about you know, the amount of data essentially that you can now economically store. Yeah, move and store. So, yeah. So have you sort of achieved the objectives of the intent of that, of that statement? I, I think so. I think our, the, biggest, the biggest intent of that statement was to help people understand what we're talking about here, which is that data is the tangible asset they have, and managing data, and managing data is a skill that every enterprise needs to learn. Um, and the, obviously the context has changed from the last 20 years or so. People are, probably capture less than a person of data. However, if you look at what's happening in the world, probably more data has gotten generated in the last two years than the entire history of mankind, right? So I think that challenge is getting ever more larger mm -hmm. and ever more important to solve, which is fundamentally being our thesis. And so, is that, the, is that your true north? Or is that just sort of plumbing and the true north is more sort of deeper business integration? Can you talk about sort of that current vision? And well, I think, uh, both are, both, are, both are part of the true knot. Like I said, people, you know, you cannot have, you cannot build software and applications in isolation, right? Which is why, I think you brought up a great point, which is having complete integration, whether it's security, whether it's, you know, uh, technologies like the cloud, whether it's data governance, management, and so on. Having that integration, along with all the technology, along with all the, um, investments you made in the enterprise, whether it's you know, with Oracle or IBM or any of these guys, having that fully integrated version with, with in a secure fashion mm -hmm. is super important. And that's how that helps us achieve the ultimate goal of managing data well and taking advantage of it. Arun, Dave first said when we did theCUBE, when you guys came out and Cloudera had a little bit of lead on you guys, obviously that lead's changed completely around. Um, oh, Horton was going to be the red hat for Hadoop. That was kind of the, what people would talk about. And Dave would say, can there be a red hat for Hadoop? And that was kind of what people could put their arms around, the open source mm -hmm. paradigm. But a lot has changed. Certainly, you can't really say red hat. It was Linux at a different time than, sure. than, and, than Hadoop. We all know that. But it brings up the point of kind of what you guys have turned into, which is essentially an integration opportunity around open source. And this is something that we're teasing out on the Wikibon and the SiliconANGLE team is we're identifying that most large enterprises want integration beyond some of the POCs or shadow IT land and expand um, adoption. Absolutely. And, 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 what does that and what does that mean for them? Because they want to integrate. And how do you guys help be a positive impact for that? So I think, you know, in our, fa in our role now as one of the key, um, so you talk to any enterprise today where we have Hortonworks, probably it's the same for any of our competitors too, right? Uh, there's more data uh, or at least there's as much data in Hadoop as in any other system in the enterprise today. Which means, given the, no, given the fact that everybody understands that data is important and it's tangible, we, we, we are a trusted partner to our enterprise customers where we go in and help them integrate with not just their internal processes but also with other vendors they may have, like a Pivotal, you saw the announcements today, uh, Pivotal or an IBM or a Microsoft. We feel like playing that Playing that aggregator role of, of what, through data is, is an important uh, role, or an important sort of function we bring to the enterprise, and we help them manage their data across all their systems, whether it's SAP, IBM, what have you. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you the question around the, the startups who want to come in. Open source is, a, is really an organic environment. You guys run a great show here. It's really about the community. Mm -hmm. It's not a big commercial event. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, I'm determined mean, to keep it that way. Yeah. The, the, the other shows do. Um, but the integration's hard. So it's hard for a startup or even a, a company that's transforming to the cloud mm -hmm. because of the scale involved. We heard Microsoft kind of tease it out by saying, hey, we want to create these integration touch points. How has the bar changed for companies to win an enterprise customer with open source, with Hadoop, with big data, 
big data applications. What's the current things that you see as from a customer standpoint, what's the bar, to, the hurdle to, to jump over? So uh, I think you brought up a great point about Red Hat, right? I think uh, we certainly, as a company, we have to be thankful for Red Hat because they showed that there was a business model around open source, and more, and more importantly, um, it, we, didn't, we didn't have to sort of break new ground in terms of helping, helping enterprises understand that there's a future with open source. A first class citizen, if you will. Exactly, right? Now, we, we're now in sort of the privileged position of being able to sort of maybe help other sort of younger startups show that there is a future in this business, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of the integration thing, we see this too, which is we, we continue to want to make this out of the box integrated, whether it's with, whether it's with Microsoft technologies or, or, or Pivotal, because the bar right now is getting higher and higher, right? In, in, when I started on Hadoop back in 2006, it was just a Thai project, right? So you could do whatever you want and people who liked it would download and run it. To fast forward that 10 years now, uh, we, we occupy a pretty, pretty important part in the overall data stack at the enterprise, which means as Hadoop's become sort of the central, uh, one of the more central pieces of your data architecture, the bar has gone up. Things like security and governance and metadata management is stuff I never thought about 10 years ago because it wasn't important at that point. Yeah. But right now, everything we build has to get secured, has to get integrated, even within our own stack. Like when, when we started at Hardworks, we had probably the first version of HTTP, uh, Hardworks data platform, the version one had about nine components. Today we have about 24, right? Yeah. So every time we bring a new piece of technology in, we have to do you know, exponentially larger amount of work to actually integrate it. And it's the same thing. You know, I was just talking to one of our um, financial service customers. They're like, we love the fact that we can upgrade your software every six months because we, we trust you guys to do it. One of the concerns we have is if we upgrade your software, what happens to vendor X software that is integrated with yours, Y and so on. And it, it is a tough job. It's something that we, we continue to get better at, but it's something that you know, we have to pay attention from an enterprise standpoint. So you're talking about go, growing from nine to 24 components, and a lot of that is sort of the original instantiation of a dupe sort of hits limits, it's, it's pushed to new use cases, Absolutely. so new components have to come out. Talk about how it's evolving. I mean, there are some saying, oh, Hadoop is just a, a storage you know, system. Okay, well, pretty <laughs> good one actually. It lowered the cost, did some good things, yeah. but it's evolving. Well, I think, um, you know, as with any technology, uh, you either evolve or you die, right? Um, I think Hadoop, uh, for me, has become more of a brand and an ecosystem or a name for an eco ecosystem, but I mean, I sort of, um, one of my favorite examples is a ship of Theseus, right? Which says, if you take a ship and you rebuild it with every piece of wood, is it the same ship? I think that's the same with Hadoop right now. Is it the same ship? It really isn't, but it's still the same name, right? Mm -hmm. I think fundamentally every piece in every piece of that stack has changed, Hope, you know, sometimes, yeah. mostly for the better. Sometimes you do, um, you, you do have challenges. But as a community and as a technology, as a set of technologists, it's something we are very aware of. If you don't change, you die, right? Yeah. And if we want to be relevant two years from now, or even, you know, forget 10 years, but even two or three years from now, we'll have to continue to stay evolved. Well, Spark and in-memory and IoT are great examples of the evolution. Exactly. I mean, that's been a great direct impact. Absolutely. What's the impact of Spark for you guys? Where does it fit in the roadmap? I mean, other people kind of have positioned Spark a certain way. How do you, you know, guys we, look at we it? We love Spark. You know, the fact that you can actually come in and do a more diverse set of workloads, whether it's you know, SQL or streaming or whatever, using one API is, is really great. Now, having said that, we have to, make, we have to continue to push the bar. Right? I mean, that's why we, we, we talk, we, we've been spending a lot of time internally on this notion of assemblies, which allows you to, you know, for me, good technology always fades into the background. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't hit you in the face. Well, can you just back up for a second, talk about assemblies. What is assemblies, and then go into... Uh, Absolutely, it's a good point. So for, for me, assembly is, uh, is, if you look at what our customers are doing today, think of any application they're building, they have to put together a bunch of technologies, right? Mm -hmm. They have to put together Spark, and they have to have some NoSQL store, let's say it's Edgebase, they got to do some metadata management and security, which is Knox, or Ranger, or any of these, right? Um, and they want to maybe you, you use a Storm or whatever, it doesn't really matter. The point is we sell a bunch of these technologies and the customer has to put it together himself or an ISV does it for us, right? Now, there, there are sort of fundamental limitations with, in terms of skills and knowledge yeah. and you know, sort of the effort it takes. And I think of it as sort of you know, undi undifferentiated heavy lifting to put them over and over again, right? I mean, the fact that if you have to develop it on your laptop and then go to a testing environment, then yeah. pre-prod and prod, you're doing sort of undifferentiated heavy lifting over and over again, the same stuff. Right? Yeah, and a new piece comes in, I got to test it again. Exactly. Code it's, revisions. It's, exactly. Yeah. Now, wouldn't it be nicer if, 
you know, you, you go back to the Windows world, I mean, how many people wrote, you know, MFC applications? Very few. Yeah. Right? What people did was they downloaded an application, whether it was a notepad-like thing or Word or whatever, and they downloaded and they ran, right? We feel like a similar thing needs to happen in the Hadoop ecosystem, which yeah. is, instead of the customers putting these technologies together, we want a solution blueprint that you can download and run. Right, and it's got a specific way of, and that's why it's got a specific configuration of components and how they're wired together. So it's a runtime assembly concept, right? Exactly. So you download it, you know, download from GitHub, let's say. It's a simple spec. You point it to your existing Hadoop cluster and voila, instead of, instead of thinking in terms so of- You automate and, a lot of the heavy lifting. Exactly, right? Instead of thinking in terms of technologies, you think in terms of use cases. You think in terms of, oh, I want a customer 360 application. I want a cybersecurity application. I want, a, a farming application, if you will. So you download that and run instead of worrying about what's happening under the hood. So in your, in your slides today, you had the yarn.next, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> what is that? The <laughs> <laughs> so yarn.next is all about... Not dot .net. Dot .net, no. Not no. Next. Dot .next. That would get me in trouble, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. We'd have a lot to talk about then. <laughs> um, so for us, that's in sort of the next phase of Hadoop. It, 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 you can even call it Hadoop.next, yeah. right? Uh, clearly our marketing guys haven't gotten involved in this yet. <laughs> <laughs> but They'll polish it up a bit. Uh, so, I'm sure. Now the idea is you set up this set of, you set up a, a, an API and a framework where you can now think in terms of a higher level solution blueprint rather than in terms of individual technologies like Spark or Storm, right? So for us that's allowing those, you saw the spec I put up, right? I'm, I'm yeah. probably going to get crucified for putting code on a, <laughs> on a keynote, but that is a spec. You, you download the spec and you point it to an existing Hadoop cluster, you get an enterprise search application, mm -hmm. right? We feel like that is really the next sort of phase for Hadoop, yeah. if you will. Like the first phase of Hadoop was MapReduce, HDFS, then we got Yarn, now yeah. we want to focus so on take the reference and the implementations and turn them into recipes, basically. Exactly. And, and the, so the business impact is, is simplicity, speed, Absolutely, solutions. Solutions, yeah. right? Yeah. And we want to see hundreds of startups build those solutions and sell it. And so what does it take for that to happen now? So this is in what, you're just putting a spec out there? Yeah, so in What's the community the this work this? has already started for the last, I would say, six to nine months. So I would say uh, later this year, later half this year, or maybe early next year, we get to a point where you, you can, I mean, if you go and download Hadoop code right now, you, you can actually play with it. But if you go from a from a product standpoint, we probably productize it in 2017. All right, and and this initiative that's obviously in the community, uh, vendors, customers together. What's the makeup of the all of it? All of, all it. of it, right? I mean, the, the 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 promise for you as a, an enterprise is that you know now no longer have to worry about training everybody up in your enterprise on these skills. I'm sure you'll definitely have some experts, mm -hmm. but right now. To touch, and, to touch Hadoop itself, you need a bunch of skills, whether it's Spark yeah. or Scala, whatever it is. That's right? powerful. Uh, we want to make it so trivial that you can you know, go to a vendor, you know, they have a banking app or a 360 app or whatever, and you can download, a lot of them will be open source. So this allows people, so the benefit to, the, to startups and or solution providers is they can come into these verticals. Exactly. With prepackaged applications and compete and provide value. Absolutely. And, and make and money. Exactly, we want them to make money. Like so we, we want to provide the plumbing, but the way you put them together, I mean, a, a great example is the Metron stuff we're doing, which is cybersecurity. We're building one of those apps too, right? Now, we're also building in a way where somebody, a startup would come, drive a specific machine intelligence app, like a machine learning algorithm, and they can monetize it. Right, we, we yeah. continue to provide the plumbing that they can monetize. So your, your role there in the context of building packaged apps is, is, an, is an accelerant, is that right? Or? Yeah, we want to build the infrastructure up so that there's a spec for you to build your applications. We will, some, in some cases, we will build the apps like Metron because we're forced to, because there's yeah, okay, nothing yeah. existing out there. Yeah. But we You're want the priming the pump ecosystem. for the market. You're just exactly. making the catalyst, right? I we mean, are the you, catalyst. I mean, I think about Splunk. Splunk has some packaged apps that have been very, very successful, but that starts to, bleed into your ecosystem. You don't want to do that you know, too aggressively, obviously, exactly. right? We, we want everybody else to, you know, we want you know, a Trisata to build an app, right? Yeah. Like the, a banking app, they want to build it. Right now it's hard. I mean, they have to come in, they have to plumb in, you know, edge base with high- They're doing whatever. a lot of heavy lifting. Obviously, exactly. he's doing a lot of heavy lifting. No, no, it's lifting. hard because you need domain expertise. You Absolutely. Need a lot of data science expertise. Yeah, and they want to basically jobs. minimize all that heavy lifting and focus on the customer work. Yeah. You guys take care of that for them. Okay, so I got to ask you a personal question. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now? You went public, company uh -huh. went public, you're the co-founder. 
you kind of, I mean, there's always pressure of the next level, gun to your head, public company, a lot of pressure. What are you working on now and uh, what's, what's happening with, in your daily life in uh, Horton Works? Well, more, me more meetings for sure, more customers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have. So uh, you're on the road a lot? I'm Customer business. Probably, yeah. Certainly more than a couple coding, of years ago. Coding, doing reviews. Uh, by, all my coding happens when I'm on a flight. <laughs> so okay. I look forward to some of them, <laughs> because that's the only time I get really meeting with customers. <laughs> but I do get to spend a lot, we've got a fantastic team and a community. I get to spend a lot of time with them, sort of continuing to drive the roadmap. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not executing on it, it's my team executing, but yeah. it's still, you know, we've a different level oversight, of some advisory work. Exactly. All right, so here's the, here's the, here's the uh, zillion, the billion dollar question. So, you're a successful entrepreneur, you've seen this from the beginning, still, still growing with the company. I'm sure you get a lot of questions from entrepreneurs. There's a ton of opportunity, you mentioned the, the mm -hmm. crypto stuff and the security stuff. What, what are the good white spaces for entrepreneurs to sink their teeth in? What advice would you give for the uh, folks out there who are on GitHub, contributing code, who get a band of brothers together, or sisters if you will, and just come together and say, hey, let's, let's tackle something, let's sink our teeth into some new, cool, but relevant areas. What advice would you give them? What navigation would you show? That, what path is there? Um, I don't think there's one path, but what I've learned yeah. from, my, from, my, uh, from my experience is details matter, right? Pay attention to details, but also your, make sure that your customer doesn't have to pay attention to details. <laughs> so you have to pay attention because it's important for you to get things right, but also make it sure that you know, technology blends into the background because I think you know, the best piece of software are Best piece of technology are those which burn in the background. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, I love this Steve Jobs quote which says, real artists ship, so ship software. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you were going to do a startup right now. No way. What would you do? <laughs> no, <I> hypothetical. <laughs> if you were, what would you jump into? Of the ecosystem, of, in the Hadoop ecosystem, what's uh, compelling to jump in on a wave right now? I think, you know, data is still, I mean, you know, I love the code from, I don't know, it was probably you guys, right? Data is new oil kind of code. I think data is, is still interesting. There's also, you know, FinTech, which is interesting, and security. Security, I was going to say. Yeah, right? security is, you know, <laughs> conducive. <laughs> Leads me to my security question. So let's say, so Rob Bearden says to your CIO, listen, I don't know who your CIO is, I've not met him. Uh -huh. But anyway, says, listen, I want you to present to the board and, and communicate to them on security. Like for us, our own internal security. So the CIO goes to you and says, Arun, what do I tell them? What should the CIOs be telling their board of directors about security? Well, I think clearly security matters, uh, you know, because there are jobs on the line and, and you know, legal stuff on it. But also, as a CIO, it's important to understand that security is a means to an end. Um, you know, we constantly have this, you know, lots of times we have constant dialogue with enterprises where security is almost used as, uh, um, as something to beat people up a with. A blunt instrument. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, like I said again, great piece of technology, including security, they blend into the background, they let people you know, achieve their end goal, but obviously make sure that they don't fall into a trap of you know, doing something illegal or wrong. Yeah. Right. What about the ecosystem? Communities win. Absolutely. We're seeing that. Um, I think we're an great, example of that. It was a great yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> it was a great post on Medium, the guy who started Secret, anonymous apps, identity yeah. matters, and that kind of brought out this whole kind of uh, realization that who you are and what you work on in public essentially matters. Certainly mm -hmm. open source, it's been this way. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever, community, it will be the defining factor in winners and losers, because the, the stack's developing, the solutions are coming online through you know, runtime assemblies and new reference architectures. What is the community success factor? Has it changed at all, evolved? Has, can you share any color into what's I, the current state of the community? I think, um, again, a lot of my experience has been colored by the, the ASF. I, I continue to be a big fan of that. Uh, I'll give you a, a very simple example. We started the Atlas project um, about a year and a half ago with a bunch of customers, actually. Um, you, you asked about how we do software. So we started Atlas Project about a year and a half ago. Over the last six months, we've seen an amazing amount of involvement from IBM in Atlas. It's not something that happened at the corporate level, it's something that's happening at the grassroots level, which is amazing to see. Engineers within IBM. Exactly. Okay. So that's we're great. doing this. We're, exactly, <laughs> they're like, we're doing this, and over time, like, yeah. their strategies evolved to, to, to the fact that they now you know, are big supporters of Atlas, and they continue to contribute lots of their you know, IP and software and, and time, right? So again, 
it's just a small example of how, you know, even though obviously IBM has their distribution, we have ours, you know, we still can collaborate uh, in the community the same way we continue to collaborate with the Cloudera on, on Hadoop or with, you know, Pivotal or whoever it is. So I think I'm a big fan of the community model, and especially the model that the ASF brings along. Um, I think that's here to stay. Okay, uh, your take on the European show here, obviously, it's always been Europe was different than the States, and different requirements, obviously mm -hmm. different privacy rules are pretty mm -hmm. obvious. But as the, comp as the, as the uh, community gets global, mm -hmm. you got Asia Pacific, Europe, um, South America, EMEA, Latin, Latin, Latin America, Latin, everything's yeah. kind of all now one <laughs> flat world. <laughs> Are there similarities now? Oh, is it absolutely. blurring? Is it still different? Can you compare and I contrast? think they're getting more and more similar. Uh, in fact, some of our customers here in Europe are actually driving on aspects like security and governance even harder. Like you brought up you know, the fact that data from France cannot leave its borders. Uh, so we've had to build a bunch of technologies in Atlas um, and Ranger to do things like geo-based policies. Like that was not a concern in the States, but we brought Atlas here and Ranger here and immediately we were told you have to do this. And that was great because it collectively allowed us to make our software even better. So I love the fact that we get, uh, there's obviously a lot of similarities going forward as the, as the markets mature, but I love the fact that we're getting newer and newer interesting and more interesting requirements out of Europe too. So I'm, I'm a big fan. Final question, what are you most excited about right now in the ecosystem, the tech? Uh, you mentioned uh, Akka's Riff, obviously we put it on Facebook before we came on. Um, obviously AI is great, cognitive is good. You're seeing kind of the coolness of computer science yeah. around some of the futuristic stuff that we all dreamed about. Um, what, what are you excited about? That stuff, what other, can you share what you're excited about right now? Um, in, in the Hadoop space or more general? More in gen general. Both. Oh, in general. Yeah, in general, yeah. Um, so growing up, my, 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 um, my dream, I mean, I started programming when I was 10, so my pro my, and I started playing chess around the same age. So my, growing up, my, my dream was to build a chess playing software. But then, at some point, I learned Go, right? And I, I never imagined that, you know, uh, you could write software to beat a human at Go. <laughs> and here we are, right? <laughs> it was, I'm blown away with what, you know, Dennis uh, Hassabis over here in, in London has done. Uh, I think that's, that's massive, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a moment to celebrate for all of us as engineers. So what do you Valley guys think about, about that in the context, you know, Watson had this big grand challenge, right? And then now Go takes it to, oh, yeah, to, a, a, whole to new a new level, level right? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, what's the take in the Valley on, on Watson? Oh, people, people are just, geeking out. I mean, yeah. I think it's really yeah. wonderful. I, I mean, mean is, it, is it competitive to what Google and Facebook are doing? Is it, uh, no, is it just old? Well, there's an arms race aspect to the, to the marketing side of it though, but I think there's very few and the population is growing, computer scientists around this area, so it's just more promotion. I mean, the challenge of Go is significantly oh, higher than, yeah. than, I mean, than, than, than chess. Now, Jeopardy, different situation, right? So. Well, well, I mean, things have, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a testament to how technology continues to improve, right? I mean, one of the big things that Vat Watson did really well was natural language processing. Now I've got a $120 device at home called Amazon Echo, which is probably as good. And to, when it comes to natural language processing, right? So it, it, it's yeah, pretty, it's an more amazing more horizontal word. applications, yeah. as you were saying, John. Yeah. So. I, I mean, Dave, I think people, there's a whole new wave, at least I was talking with um, 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 Cloud Foundry CEO about this. You know, we're older in the computer science, but a little bit older than Arun, but <laughs> you know, when we were growing up, you know, computer science, you kind of knew everybody pretty yeah. much now. The kids are natively in, in, you know, embracing computer science as, a, as oxygen. Yeah. And there's a, there's a natural thirst for geeking out on writing code and or either being involved in yeah. some sort of building of something. So I think, you know, when you start to see this automation facilitation around abstracting away complexities, people get jazzed about it. I mean, I think Silicon Valley is going nuts. I think Facebook is a clear uh, example. You Oculus Rift, you got the, you know, the new cameras, you got Google self-driving cars. Yeah. You have all kinds of uh, cool things going on. Amazon with Echo. So I, I just, I think, Dave, I think it's just, for just the beginning of a renaissance of computer science that we're going to see explosion. Well, being able to sort of access that tooling, yeah. that sort of AI tooling, NLP or whatever, yeah. in everyday you know, systems. When you can get non-programmers non becoming programmers, right. that'll be the secret of the action. And essentially it's almost like 4GL back in Is the day. Is that something that you see as uh, well, I think, a near-term reality? Or? Look at um, a couple of things, right? Even look at things like you know, uh, 3D printers. Yeah. Like mm. pretty much every kid is going to grow up with one yeah. pretty soon, right? That with things like AI, 
who knows what's going to happen. I mean, the opportunities are sort of endless. The robotics clubs now are almost yeah. in every high school. You're seeing robotics oh. exploding. Yeah. Did um, you hear that story on NPR the other day about the kid, some college kid who basically straightened his teeth with a 3D printer? Wow, really? Yeah, he basically conducted ortho on himself. <laughs> that saves some good cash. I'd like to figure out <laughs> was, how to get my kids on yeah. the well, program. You know, well, <laughs> I just got a root canal. Nervous. I got to call this guy. <laughs> Believe me, I got four kids. I know exactly the racket called braces. And the reaction <laughs> and from the industry, the entrenched industry, is, well, is it a good thing there wasn't bone disease in there? Because that yeah. could have been, come on. <laughs> He's just, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Talk yeah. about disruption. Arun, great run, <laughs> congratulations Absolutely. on all your Thank success. You. Great to have you on theCUBE sharing your insight um, and experiences and just overall take, appreciate it. And Day thanks for supporting John, us. Thanks again. Appreciate uh, it. Definitely appreciate it. Good to all see right. you. Okay, we are live here in Dublin. We'll be back with more live coverage here of Hortonworks Hadoop Summit. Real great community, not a big commercial show, uh, really getting down and dirty, a lot of education and uh, bringing the European flavor to it. So some great t-shirts, Dave, with uh, you know, the elephant with the Irish outfit on. Slancha. I got to get that, I got to get that. Uh, <laughs> be back with more after this short break.